Kia ora, I'm David Chester with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock. With news, we need to get ready for a 3 degree Celsius future and start adapting to it. But first, initial jobless claims in the US came in at just 203,000 last week, much lower than expected. But the Chicago Fed's monitoring of their National Activity Index reveals a slip in September. But in October, that may have picked up and substantially. The S&P market US factory PMI contracted its least in three months and their services sector PMI is still expanding at a good pace and has been for six months now. This helps explain why employment has been stronger than expected for some time. Although firms in both regional and national surveys are increasingly optimistic about the future, they seem to be ignoring, or at least looking past, the damage the extended Boeing strike will cause there. In Japan, their flash October PMI report shows a contraction too in their factory sector, but only a minor one. But output and new order levels slipped at a slightly faster rate. Their services sector isn't expanding either, according to this same report, a slip from the prior month. Apparently, Japanese businesses are struggling to adapt to their modest inflation pressures. And India's October PMI stayed strongly expansionary. New order levels were high. But there are signs of serious overheating, and inflation in India is a building concern. An updated United Nations report shows that we've essentially run out of time to cut greenhouse gas emissions. We're on track for a three degree Celsius rise in global temperatures, and that will radically change how the planet operates, most of it not good. The difference between rhetoric and action is stark. China with a 5.2% rise in emissions and India with a 6.1% rise are overwhelming the US with a 1.4% fall and the EU with a 7.5% restraint. Together, China and India released 20 million metric tonnes of greenhouse gas, 38% of the global total. Together, the US and EU released 9 million tonnes, or 17%. Neither China nor India are likely to heed the evidence, and if Trump is elected, the US will likely switch sides. So it will now be all up to us on how we adapt. Fortunately, New Zealand is in a relatively good position, or that perhaps should be said, a less bad position. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 4.19% and down 6 basis points from this time yesterday. And the price of gold will start today at $2,732 an ounce, up $12 from yesterday. And oil prices are 50 US cents softer, just on $70 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is now just over $74 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 60.1 US cents, and up 10 basis points from yesterday. Against the Aussie, we're also up 10 basis points at 90.6 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're down 10 basis points at 55.6 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today at just on 68.9 and down 10 basis points from yesterday at this time. You can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston and we'll do this again on Tuesday.